Okay, so Bloom filter, use case number two. <clears throat> so what's what's special about the Bloom filter? So filtering, as you understand, right? So there's there is there is there is a set of data on one side. Then you have a, a filtering uh, uh, test, and then uh, if uh, your data pass the test, you filter those things in, and the rest of the things are discarded. Okay, so that's. Uh, a very simple definition of filter. Uh, so what, what's so, imp so uh, 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 interesting about Bloom filters? Uh, so Bloom filters uh, are interesting because of the fact that uh, they consume much lesser data uh, to store a filtering set. Okay, so uh, let me give you an example here. Uh, so uh, for example, think, think about a million records on one side and then you have a filter and in that filter you say that uh, uh, I have got these uh, 50,000 50, uh, keys for the records and I only want these 50,000 records and then down the line I want to use these keys and uh, go ahead and search for more information in probably in an edge based database. Okay. So. Uh, the problem here is, if you start comparing, if, if, you, if you take this whole data and uh, start searching directly in HBase, you will end up having a, have a lot of blocks of data which are being read into the memory and uh, uh, because uh, there's a MySQL set which you are going to use. Uh, and so the comparison that you will do on that data, most of the data which has been read in, into the memory blocks is going to be discarded. Uh, so uh, we want to use a filtering option before we take things to a more expensive option that's actually reading from a database. Okay, so that's a more expensive option, and you want to minimize uh, uh, the, your 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 bad data going to uh, 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 such a resource. Okay, so Bloom filter actually helps there. So, so Bloom filter helps by uh, maintaining a set membership. Okay, so uh, the records which have to be uh, uh, filtered in, they're actually part of a set, and these these anything which is part of this set is actually called hot values. Okay, uh, now you might say why why is why is, why is uh, Bloom filter required for that purpose? Because uh, you could use anything for that, right? You could use the set. Fifty thousand records goes into that set. And you just go ahead and compare in that set. Why Bloom filter? The good thing about Bloom filter is it takes much lesser space, much lesser space than uh, a normal set of records that you'll keep in a set will actually cost you. Okay, uh, and this is uh, uh, and 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 this is this comes with a little bit of a cost because you you are you are uh, doing doing good on as far as the space memory space is concerned. But it comes with a little bit of a cost, and that cost is around uh, uh, some false positives going to the other side. So things which which you know that uh, these are actually not set members, but else they actually could get filtered in. Uh, but but one thing which is made sure by Bloom filter is nothing which is which is not which which should not. Uh, so there is no false negative going to the other side, which which is which is a good thing. False positives are fine, so you should not miss. So if you have false negatives being uh, given out by uh, Bloom filter, you will actually be missing records which should have been filtered in. But uh, uh, if you have false positives, that problem is not there because uh, uh, what has happened is you you wanted uh, to have filtered maybe 50,000 records, uh, and then you end up with maybe 50,500 records which is fine because ultimately you are going to test that stuff again uh, down the line in the pipeline with a much uh, costlier resource. Now that costlier resource you have uh, avoided uh, 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 being wasted for things which actually not, which should not have been uh, proceeded to that stage. Okay. Uh, there are different ways of uh, looking at Bloom filter. They can be seen as uh, join operation without caring for data values on the right. Uh, uh, in some ways it is join operation because you are you have selected a certain set of records 
which you want to merge with uh, things which are on the other side, on your right hand side of the filter. And but this is without uh, the records actually being joined uh, uh, from the databases. But, but you have actually picked up the right set of records. So so if you do a join, you don't have to do the join on the whole thing. It can also be comp uh, compared with a replicated join, where instead of replicating hot list everywhere, so hot list, uh, uh, for example, in our, in our uh, code, we are uh, distributing uh, the stop words list, right? The, the, that list was not too big. So I, I just uh, spread that out everywhere using uh, distributed cache. But Bloom filters could, could help in such cases because the size of the Bloom filter would be much lesser than uh, that file that you're distributing. So as far as applicability is concerned, uh, uh, this is pretty simple uh, because data, can, data has, to be, has to be separated into records. Only then you can apply the filter. And then uh, there has to be uh, uh, certain fields on which uh, you can distinguish among these records. A predetermined set of items for the hot values. So these are the hot values on which you will train your Bloom filter. So I, I think I missed talking about this. Maybe I'll talk about it in, in slides uh, uh, soon coming. Oh yes, this is here. So as you can see the structure of the Bloom filter pattern. You have a, a training part in Bloom filter and then the second part is actually searching part. Okay. Uh, so uh, in this uh, lecture, we're going to have a look at the Bloom filter training part. And then uh, as, as part of the course, we'll have a look at the Bloom filter uh, searching part. Okay. Uh, so training uh, is, is, is quite important. So in this diagram, I see I, what I have shown is only one mapper. This is input split and one mapper. But actually, you can, uh, so, so this would be final cases where you have uh, the data that you're training on is not, uh, very high, uh, but uh, if you want to train on huge sets of data, it, it just makes sense to have multiple mappers. And then, uh, so so uh, the way you design your algorithms again uh, changes a little bit. Uh, so, uh, in the Bloom filter mapper, uh, we'll use uh, a class which is provided by uh, Hadoop. So that is called, uh, that's known by the Bloom filter itself. Uh, okay, I, I, I think I just talked about this. First, uh, the filter is trained over the set of hot values. Trained Bloom filter object is stored in HDFS to be used during filtering. Filter needs retraining when hot list changes. Yeah, let me just explain this once more. So as I said, uh, you need to train your filters and uh, they will be tra uh, trained on the hot values, that's the set membership. Uh, the thing is, uh, over time, these values can change, and whenever those values change, you will have to retrain your Bloom filter. Otherwise, uh, the filtering operation won't be right. Uh, so this, this is stored as an object in HDFS, and then the next stage, which is searching uh, uh, in the filter, uses uh, this object as the filter. Uh, then the, uh, on the Bloom filtering part itself, uh, the, you, you initially will uh, load it from the distributed cache. The size of Bloom filter is much more lesser. Uh, each in the match, map function, this is actually a, only a map job. There's no reduce phase uh, as far as the testing part is concerned. In training, you require a reduce phase. In map function, each record is set membership tested with Bloom filter object. Output will be records that pass the membership test, and some false positive, as I said, are expected. Resemblances. Uh, so, so Bloom filters are fairly recent as far as data analytics is concerned. Uh, but uh, these filters have existed for quite some time, uh, but might not have been useful uh, when uh, the world was not dealing with big data uh, because it, uh, the, the, the very purpose of Bloom filters is that you reduce the size of your data, uh, the space that it, it, it actually consumes, 
So in such cases, definitely benefits. So with the, with the advent of big data analytics, bloom filters uh, are being seen as being quite advantageous. Uh, currently, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so the biggest concern is native implementation uh, of bloom filters in Pig at the moment, but uh, uh, it can be implemented in Pig via the user-defined functions. Uh, as far as performance of bloom filters is concerned, it's very similar to basic filtering operation. Uh, training the filter, of course, can take some time, but that's relatively infrequent. Oh yeah, and some of the things you just talked about. Use cases, uh, removing most of the unwanted values. So the example which I gave earlier had to deal with removing the unwanted values. Pre-filtering a data set for an expensive set membership check. Now, if you want to uh, do further analysis down the line, for example, checking things say, in, in HBase, then uh, uh, again, Bloom filter helps. Reduce side join with Bloom filtering. Uh, that's also a good use case. Uh, 